Homemade fermented sauerkraut, all salty and sour, easily made at home. All you need is two ingredients, cabbage and salt, and plenty of time to allow the probiotics to do their work, of course. Sauerkraut is a traditional fermented food, and it's made by allowing shredded cabbage and salt to ferment over a period of time. And as you can see, I got Mr. Brown back here, and he's... He's slicing my cabbage up for me pretty thin. And I could use a food processor, but by the time I get that out and mess it up and have to wash it, he can have that cabbage cut pretty quick. And what I'm doing is um, I have salted my cabbage down. Now, when you're salting your cabbage, for every pound of cabbage, you need to use four to five teaspoons of salt. You can use cannon salt or you can use kosher salt, whichever one. But it's very important that you not over salt it. So you can see that I've gotten all my cabbage salted and you can see how wilted it is. And that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna wilt it and it's gonna bring that, uh, that moisture out there. It's gonna make that brine. And uh, the salt helps create an environment that, that favors the beneficial bacteria. It helps keep mold away too until it's fermented. So your salt's also gonna help keep your cabbage crisp. Now what I'm gonna put mine in is I've got this, this really big glass crock and I've had this thing for 20 years and I have put everything in it. But I like making my sauerkraut in it because I can see what it's doing. I've got different old crocks that I could make it in, but they're, you can't see them and I can't tell what my cabbage is doing. And I just, I prefer to do it in this. So if you've got some kind of a, a gallon glass jar or quart jar that if you're just making a little bit, I just, I really think it, it does a good job. And I'm gonna go ahead and put what I've got cut up in here. I don't have a whole crock full right now because I just, uh, I just went out to the garden and, uh, harvested three cabbage heads. Now I've got my trusty little rolling pin here and I also use this to pound my cabbage with. It's heavy and it works really good. So you just use what you got. I don't usually buy special uh, equipment or anything if I, if I can do it otherwise. But when you're making this kraut, of course you want to shred it as thin as you can. And you can ferment anything with your cabbage. Uh, you can put fruit. Y'all can hear my chicken out there. You can put fruit. You can put vegetables, herbs, and spices in here. I put turmeric and I put uh, dill seed, uh, just different things in here. Uh, you can put your turmeric and your ginger, of course. When you put it in there, it's really, really going to gonna bump up that uh, that good gut health but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep pounding this cabbage I'm gonna get as much brine out of it as I can sometimes you can get enough brine to cover it and sometimes you can't that's why we'll be making a, uh, a brine 
which will be, it's one tablespoon of uh, salt to four cups of water. And that makes a 2% brine. So if I don't get enough brine over my cabbage, that's what I'll use. Now you can see, after me pounding it quite a bit, you can see the brine starting to come up. Um, I've been pounding it. Mr. Brown helped me out a little bit, and he's been pounding on it. But I still don't feel like I've got enough brine. You can see it's about up to the top, but it's not really covering all my cabbage. So I'll be making a, a brine for it, which, like I said, it's one tablespoon of salt to four cups of water. And I'm not going to pour it all in there. I'm just going to use a little bit at a time till I get it to where I want it. So I'm going to pour a little bit in there and I'm just going to kind of like mush it around. And you can see it's starting to really cover the top. But I still feel like I need just a little bit more brine. Because even when I put a weight in it, you know, I don't, I want to make sure that all the cabbage is completely covered with brine. Because that salt in that brine is what's going to help keep the mold away. So you can see, you see how that brine is over the cabbage. And that's how you want it. So we're good there. You can see on my, my pounder, you see how that brine's up there. You want your, your brine... Most people like to have it about an inch over their cabbage once it's weighted down. I've got some leftover cabbage leaves, and what I like to do is, is cover the top of my kraut with it. Uh, I'd rather have big cabbage leaves, but sometimes you don't end up with them, so just use what you got. Just kind of cover the top up. And this is just going to lay on top of your cabbage, and then whatever you use as a weight. Uh, will go on top of this. I've seen older people use uh, rocks, bricks, whatever it takes to hold that that cabbage down under that brine. You don't have to, like I said, you don't have to buy special equipment to make sauerkraut. Grandmas and grandpas have been doing it for years and years and years with all that, without all that fancy equipment. So once I get all this covered, what I done is uh, I got me a, a gallon freezer bag and I filled it up with water. Now I'm just gonna lay it on top. And what I like about freezer bags for water is it will lay and kind of mold to the side of your of your crock or your jar or whatever. It's heavy enough that it'll, it'll keep it weighted down and keep that brine up there. You see that brine, you see my fingers, you can see how that brine's about an inch over. And that's the way you want it. So anyways, we're done. And it's about that easy. So after about four to six weeks, and even some people months, um, it produces a sour, salty side dish and it's rich in beneficial bacteria. Sauerkraut, its roots are in Germany and Eastern Europe. They cook with it and they eat a lot of it. And we just love sauerkraut. Now you see my, my crock has a lid, but I want to keep it, I always keep it tried in a dark place. So to help it out, I'm going to put a tea towel on top. I'm going to put my lid on and I'm going to put it in my pantry in the corner where it's dark. I'm gonna let that ferment. So we'll come back and we'll check it in a couple weeks. Many cabbage is very easy to make, and I'm so glad you stopped by. We'll be checking on the cabbage in a couple weeks, and I'll show you where it's at at that point, and it should be good and bubbly by then. So I hope you like this video. God bless everybody.